This is a 5-minute medicine series on syncope. Syncope is defined as a sudden transient loss of consciousness, followed by spontaneous recovery. Presyncope is a feeling of impending syncope without the loss of consciousness. The approach to presyncope is similar to that of syncope. Patients will not come to you complaining of syncope. They will usually say they are dizzy. Dizziness is usually due to either causes of syncope or those causing vertigo. A loss of consciousness usually indicates syncope, as disorders causing vertigo most often are not associated with a loss of consciousness. Otherwise, finding out if the patient was feeling lightheaded or wanted to pass out, which suggests presyncope, compared to a sensation of the room spinning around them or ataxia, which suggests vertigo, will help you determine how to proceed with your history. The differential diagnosis can be sorted in five main groups. Cardiac abnormalities that can cause syncope include myocardial infarction, valvular disease like aortic or mitral stenosis, arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation, ventricular tachycardia and AV block, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, cardiac tamponade, and aortic dissection. Neurologic abnormalities that can cause syncope include stroke, seizure, and intracranial bleed like subarachnoid hemorrhage. Metabolic abnormalities like hypoglycemia and hypoxia can cause syncope. Reflex-mediated causes refer to those which reduce one's blood pressure, causing reduced perfusion to the brain, which may result in a loss of consciousness. Causes include vasovagal, which refers to certain stimuli that stimulate the vagal nerve, which increases parasympathetic tone and results in a sudden onset of vasodilation and bradycardia, resulting in hypotension. This classically happens when coughing, vomiting, when bearing down, and so on. Orthostatic syncope is a drop in blood pressure that happens when moving from lying to sitting or sitting to standing. It can be due to hypovolemia or antihypertensive medications. Anemia can be due to a variety of causes, but classically is due to a bleeding source that causes one blood pressure to drop. Psychiatric causes of syncope are rare. Tailor your history based on your differential diagnosis. Ask about symptoms which may suggest cardiac pathology such as chest pain, shortness of breath, or palpitations. Were there any tonic-clonic movements, incontinence, or tongue biting to suggest a seizure? Was the episode witnessed? Any symptoms to suggest a stroke? Is there any evidence of any focal neurologic de deficit? The presence of a headache may raise concern for an intracranial bleed. If they have a history of diabetes, find out about their glycemic control. Do their sugars run low sometimes? Could this have been due to a vasovagal event? What was the patient doing at the time of the episode? Coughing? Laughing? Urinating? Their medication history is important. Are they using any beta blockers or diuretics? Did the syncope occur when moving from sitting to standing? Any symptoms to suggest they are anemic or may have an underlying malignancy like colon cancer? These are some classic symptoms that may help you determine the diagnosis. Pause the video for a second to review this chart of classic symptoms on history. On physical exam, you want to check the vitals. Check for orthostatic changes in blood pressure or heart rate. Orthostatic changes are defined as a drop in systolic blood pressure of 20 millimeters of mercury or an increase in the heart rate of 30 beats per minute when moving from lying to sitting or from sitting to standing. Check the blood pressure in both arms to help rule out aortic dissection. Assess the patient's volume status. A flat JVP, dry mucous membranes, and increased skin trigger may suggest hypovolemia as a cause. On cardiac exam, listen for murmurs, such as the systolic crescendo-decrescendo murmur of aortic stenosis. Look for focal neural signs that may suggest the patient had a stroke or intracranial hemorrhage. The patient may have bruising on their body due to trauma incurred from their seizure or the fall. Additional physical exam should be done as the history suggests. For instance, if they have a change in bowel habits or hematochesia, do a digital rectal exam. An EKG should be done on all patients with syncope. It is helpful for many cardiac causes including AV block, tachyarrhythmias, and ischemic events. If you are suspicious of an arrhythmia but unable to capture on EKG, consider a whole thermometer for up to 72 hours. If you find evidence of arrhythmias, you can send the patient for electrophysiologic testing where they can reproduce the arrhythmia and further define it. If you suspect a stroke or bleed, get a CT of their head. If you are concerned about a seizure, get an EEG to assess the electrical activity of the brain. Serum blood glucose is an easy to monitor in a hospital and can assess whether the patient has episodes of hypoglycemia. Other investigations should be done based on suspicions. For instance, cardiac enzymes if concerned about an MI or an echo if you suspect valvular disease. Often a reason for syncope cannot be identified after initial workup and patients are admitted for a cardiac workup. This study by Sarasin et al. has been validated and suggests using three risk factors to determine whether it is worthwhile to pursue cardiac workup. Age greater than 65, history of CHF, and an abnormal ECG. If they have zero risk factors, there is a 0-2% to 2 chance of arrhythmia-induced syncope. 
one risk factor, there's a 6% chance, two risk factors, there's a 41% chance, and three risk factors suggest a 60% chance. People with an acute coronary syndrome or arrhythmia-induced syncope may develop cardiogenic shock, and signs of hypotension, hypoxemia, altered level of consciousness, and dyspnea may indicate this. If you notice there is an elevation in the cardiac enzymes, EKGs, or telemetry strips that are revealing dynamic ST segments or tachyarrhythmia, you should inform a senior medical resident. On summary, determine whether dizziness is due to a syncopal cause or vertigo. History and physical exam are keys to the diagnosis in most cases. Assess volume status and obtain orthostatic vitals in all patients with syncope. Not all patients need a full cardiac workup, especially if the clinical story reveals another etiology like hypoglycemia. The Saracen risk fork can help you determine the likelihood of arrhythmia and whether to pursue further investigations to find evidence of this.